I've been editing photos in Lightroom for over nine years now, and it's changed a lot in that time. Many things that used to take me an hour to do now only take a few minutes, and in some cases, a few seconds. I want to share with you guys one editing tip that has dramatically sped up my workflow for editing a single photo that you can then apply to all of your other photos. And next thing you know, that set of photos that would have taken you an hour to edit now only takes a few minutes. And the secret is masking. All right, so I have the photo I shot in last week's tip video pulled up. This is going to be the only photo that we are editing today. I'm gonna to show you guys exactly how I did that and got the results that you saw in the previous video. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this photo exactly how I did for the last video. I'm going to apply my standard preset from my brand new Lightroom preset pack. Then I'm going to apply the warm shadows modifier. And then I'm going to apply the cool sky modifier. I'm actually going to adjust this one, bring it down to about 54. And last, we're gonna use the landscape pop modifier. Bring that down to about 38 and boom, we're done. That's how quick and easy it is when you learn how to utilize masks properly. And the secret to these masks is that we are basically going to be creating our own adaptive presets. Now, if you've ever used Lightroom and scrolled down through your presets, you might see these adaptive portrait presets and adaptive sky and adaptive subject and adaptive background blur. What we're basically going to be doing is creating our own adaptive presets that cater to our own editing style. And how you do that, you come over here to the masks. Let's go ahead and select sky and invert. So now everything except for the sky is highlighted. I find this extremely useful and I use it on pretty much every single photo I edit. So if you're like me and you consistently find yourself warming up the scenes in your photos, you might want to try this out. So now that I have everything except for the sky highlighted, we're going to drag the white balance up to a warmer temperature. Let's do about 25 here. And then I'm actually going to bring up the shadows just a little bit. And the next thing you're going to want to do is rename that mask. So let's do warm shadows. So now that you've done that, you can go and create a new preset here. So let's call this one warm shadows. And we're going to check none, but we are going to do the masking over here. So the only thing we have selected is the warm shadows and then make sure the support amount slider down here is selected as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and create one more mask. We're gonna select the sky again as well. And we're just gonna make the sky a little bit more, a little bit more blue. I'm going to drag the color temperature down to minus 30 and lower the exposure by about one stop. So now that we've done that, I'm gonna rename this to Cool Sky. And then create another preset, name this one Cool Sky. And make sure only the Cool Sky and the Support Amount slider are selected. All right, so let's edit this photo one more time with my Lightroom preset selected here. And we have the Warm Shadows. All right, and the reason I told you guys to have the support amount slider selected is for this simple reason right here. You can then go in and adjust the strength of the mask. So if you want to have it really warm, you can have it really warm. If you want to have it be very, very subtle, you could just do, you know, 25 or 50, whatever you might want to do. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. So let's make it a little bit warmer than the actual mask here. Let's do 141. And then let's select the cool sky, but maybe that's a little too strong. So you're gonna to want to slide down and select 50. And you basically have a finished edit right there, but you can go a little bit farther, like how I selected my landscape pop one earlier, which just adds more contrast and lifts the shadows and adjusts the saturation a little bit in the scene. Now you don't wanna do it all the way or else it might look a little too dark and contrasty, so I'm just going to do about 30, 29 ish. And then I also have other ones for lifting the sky here that you might want to use. And as you can see, we did all of our editing for this photo 
here in the masks and it took only a fraction the amount of time it would have normally if we were going in and creating these masks for each photo. Now you don't have to do exactly what I did obviously, this is just what suits my editing style personally, but I would recommend experimenting and having a little bit of fun with this. And then once you have finished editing that photo, you can quickly just copy the settings here. Let's go ahead and just check all and paste it over here to my vertical version of this photo. Just give it a second for the masks to copy. And boom, there we go. And as you can see, the editing is consistent across both photos and they look nearly identical because they are pretty much identical. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I hope you can find a way to apply it to your own editing and your own photography workflow. If you have any other ideas for future photography tip videos, please let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. You can see videos just like this one early by becoming a member of the channel. But in the meantime, I hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.